Hello guys, welcome everybody to Mando Monday. This is the series where you guys ask the questions and I, of course, answer them. This can be to do with anything related to Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, CSGO Investing, or any current or future update related one of that source to an operation or something that we all hope is going to happen before the end of 2022, that being some sort of Christmas event or hopefully some sort of operation. Now, if you guys have any questions about anything we just went over, or maybe something a little miscellaneous, such as Star Wars, myself, Lego, doesn't really matter, leave it down below of this comment section or any other one of my videos, ask Mando, and then ask your question. It's usually easiest and best for me to find it that way. Now, there's a very few important things I want to talk about before we get into the questions this week, and as usual, they're all pretty big juicers. Before we do so, here's a quick word from our video sponsor. Today's video sponsor is, of course, Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is a place where you can buy or instantly trade your CSGO skins for some new flashy ones. It has a modern, easy-to-use layout with multiple different filters, and if needed, it has a 24-7 live chat support team. All you have to do is make sure you have your trade link, and on your first trade, if you have a left over balance it goes towards your current balance which can be used when you end up trading skins if there's a skin you really really want and don't have enough for it there's an option where you can top up your balance and if you deposit with cash you get a 35 percent deposit bonus which is very nice this holiday season skins monkey is offering one of the best deals i've ever seen across any single trading website they've prepared free gifts for everyone christmas has come early now as soon as you go on you can get one of three things you can get a completely free cs go skin of really any single value a 45 percent deposit bonus which is 10 percent more than normal being a 35 usually or of course a free balance on the site, which can be used to any item you want to trade for. The first gift is free, and others are unlocked through the trading website. So I hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, maybe if you don't celebrate Christmas. Glad to be back, glad to be going into a new year. This year was extremely successful for the YouTube channel, and I hope to continue keep uploading videos for you guys every single day. I don't really see anything stopping me here. For me, I'm loving Counter-Strike. This past year, I've probably played the most I've ever played in my entire life. Some of it being obviously AFK, or checking out different crafts and things for different videos, but still, that was pretty awesome. As of earlier today, I made a CSGO news video, the first one in two days. The market did crash, which I talked about, but now it's of course back, and it seems to be going up even a little more, which is obviously pretty good. A few reasons behind that, for me, I would most likely say that was caused by obviously Christmas going on, and probably the Steam Winter Sale as well. People were buying gifts for people, and with that, they were having to sell some skins, which makes a lot of sense. That also makes sense why liquidated items, or more liquid things, not necessarily cheap, we're falling a little bit, such as my cramp a tiger tooth. And lastly, as it goes for the quick PSA, updates this week are looking extremely slim, but they are very much possible as of leaks from Gabe Follower recently. So in the next couple of days, if not tomorrow, being Tuesday, the 27th, if we don't get an update, then I'm not so sure we're going to get one for the rest of this year. And that's going to be extremely disappointing. And of course, that will come with a whole commentary itself. Now, our first question up here, we're, we're going to call you Charizard. All right. Hi, do you really think there are more than 500,000 capsules left for the stock? home 2021 challengers so funny enough i actually received this question through an email but it's a little different so i'm not sure if it was you or someone else but i had a few people ask me this also on twitter as well not necessarily 500,000, no for antwerp i think it might be a little different stockholm it's definitely maybe a little bit similar but just on a lower scale we just never really know right it's hard to tell it's hard to also predict what i think for me is if you look at something like antwerp right now which obviously is very close to stockholm which we'll get to that the legends autograph capsule for antwerp has been pump and dumped all year it goes to retail, it goes to 50 cents. It goes back to retail, then like 35, then 50 cents, and then back down to 25. Yeah, sure, people hyping it up and pumping it is obviously very helpful, especially if you're a big YouTuber. But the thing also with that is the quantity's not actually that low. If you look every other week, the quantity really follows suit. More people end up selling when surprisingly they're at a lower peak than when they're going higher, because more people are holding them at that point in time because they think they're going to go higher. And I think people are investing in them when they're high and then they'll sell low, which makes no sense, but that's what a lot of people do. And the same thing with Stockholm, right? Stockholm Challengers capsules, I believe. I believe the other day went to 750 on the steam market quantity wise now they're a little over 1100 once again obviously it's nothing close to 500,000, but you have to think of the investors like you and i and the thousands of other people who may who maybe have a couple thousand of these things in their inventory from maybe even the 75 percent off sale like i still have quite a few of mine from the 75 percent off sale i'm not going to touch mine anytime soon they're rare they look good and the stickers inside of them look beautiful and that's why i have a whole inventory based off of them but hopefully they answered your question it's just simply too hard to tell let me know what you guys think down below of this one Love to hear you guys' thoughts. Our next question up here is from Max, and he says, Opinion on the Stockholm contenders skyrocketing, but the Copenhagen Flames is not moving as crazy as, of course, the movie Star Riders, for an example. It's a good question. I actually touched on this in my video where I talked about Stockholm absolutely skyrocketing up in price. Yes, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense whatsoever, this entire thing. I believe something is being somewhat manipulated at this point because some of it just doesn't look right. Give you guys an example. If you go towards Antwerp right now, you look at the Legends autograph capsule. Yes, these are two different things. Yes, one's autograph, one's not. 
not two different majors, but they're very similar, especially with the transparent background. And of course, they're very close in months anyway to when these were actually put on sale. 47 cents for 16,000 quantity of these capsules in the market, probably plus an extra couple hundred thousand amongst other people's inventories, right? You look at the Stockholm ones, a thousand for these Stockholm challengers for $4. That just doesn't really add up, right? You look at the Stockholm contenders, $1.45 for 1900 If you were someone new coming into the scene, you'd be like, damn, these look really good for a very, very low quantity. But what's the catch here? And I think the catch is, is there's probably a lot more of these things than people realize. And I don't think a whole lot of people are also applying these stickers as much because they obviously are very expensive. More so people are holding them as an investment, but they do go up, right? They are extremely low in quantity as well, which also doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially with the hollows, right? They are very low. Like the movie star riders the other day got to 30 on the steam market and it was still $8. That's pretty crazy for a sticker like that. That's very exclusive, but there's also some other things that play into it, right? These stickers are very niche, meaning they're expensive. They're rare. They look good, but they're also very different for someone new coming into the scene. If you're not going after, for an example, a Virtus Pro, a Copenhagen Flames, especially if you like the 2021 version more or a mouse, you might as well go with 2022, right? That's kind of the main drawing point towards that. You have Cloud9, you have Vitality, which is pretty much a one for one for 2022, besides the rarity point, which obviously does can drive up the price quite a bit. So that's kind of my reasoning why and letting everyone else know that these stickers aren't moving the exact same rate as some of the capsules are. But I think we will start to see them move a little bit more in the next little while. Our next question up here is from Lightning Aaron. He says, ask Mando, why do you always use pro match footage for all your videos? We're pretty cool to see some footage of you playing. Bilbo says, low effort. I said, nice. And I replied to the top guy, Lightning, of course. I used to, but people complain. And that's exactly what happened. So when I first started up the YouTube channel, I would actually play up random workshop maps, which no one else was doing at the time. And I thought it was a little creative. I thought it was a little different. And I very much enjoyed it. Sometimes I would actually do it live as of me playing, make different types of videos with that as well. But yeah, people just didn't enjoy it. People wanted pro match footage. People wanted me to kind of put the effort in that Jesus did. And I just didn't really care, right? And then I eventually, I just made the change. And I really haven't looked back since. Yes, you can say that it doesn't really take as much effort, but for some as well, it also just looks more professional. It's not as fast paced. And that's what people hated about it. With me playing, I would do some funny stuff here and there around the map, playing against bots in certain maps. Sometimes it was a little too fast paced and a little distracting from the actual commentary or documentary style of the video. But I guess I can start switching things up. Not every single video though. So if it's documentary, expect some pro gameplay where it's a little more laid back and chill. If it's a little more fast paced, possibly like a CSGO news, I might do a custom gameplay. So thank you for letting me know on that. Some constructive criticism right there. Our next question up here is from Graham and he says, favorite Star Wars movie. So this is always a very hard one for me because I like the originals. I like the prequels. I don't really like the sequels. You know, I like the first one when it came out, The Force Awakens. And then as the new ones came out, you realize that they didn't have a plan and Disney ruined everything with it. So I don't really care. The projects that they've made now absolutely suck. Kenobi, Boba Fett, even some parts in The Mandalorian look like they could have been filmed in 2003 or four because of the bad CGI and the horrible budget. But that's besides my point. The original trilogy, for me, I'm definitely gonna have to go with Empire or Return of the Jedi. And for the prequels, definitely Revenge of the Sith. I grew up with the prequels and I just enjoyed them so, so much. For me in Revenge of the Sith, seeing Anakin turn to the dark side and him destroy everything was so, so awesome, which sounds really bad, but it led to an emotional story, right? In Return of the Jedi, I love seeing Luke redeeming his father. And then in Empire, I like seeing everyone struggle, <laughs> which also sounds horrible. And the big bad guys like Vader coming in and just destroying everything in sight, just like anyone else would like those movies. And the rest of them are awesome too. But I think I'm gonna have to go with Revenge of the Sith. But it's very, very close between Empire Return of the Jedi and of course, Revenge of the Sith. Let me know what you guys' favorite Star Wars movie is down below if you do have one. Now, our next question up here is a heated argument on the YouTube comment section from a few days ago. And it's from Mike Grogan. I don't understand your argument for patches being you can't see them in game. In my opinion, this is a stupid argument for the reasons being you see your player in the menu of CSGO. You see your own player model when you enter the buy menu and everyone else sees your agent patches. That alone makes you stand out to teammates. And Bumboy responds with, personally, I've never noticed a patch on a teammate. So I can kind of agree with this as well. I talked about it in my commentary the day where I went over patches, specifically going over stock homes because they've shot so much up in price recently and down in quantity, but kind of similar to a lot of other things in the market. They're not really making sense with the prices and pretty much it's just coming down to supply and demand. People aren't applying these things in game. Stockholm patches for the most part aren't going to look good on your agents either. It's just a gold patch, right? Probably going to want to go with something else like the boss patch, the howl patch, or something that more matches your theme. That's just my opinion though. The only other way I see patches being semi-successful in the future, like I've stated before in previous Mandal Mondays and that patch commentary, is if they have a new placement on your sleeves, on your arm, on your wrists for another patch, right? Maybe it's not with previous agents, it's with new ones they come out with in Operation X in 2023. Maybe you could put them on your gloves, 
gloves. It would really change things up in game. But even then, why would someone want to buy Stockholm patches and apply them to their gloves? Because that would look absolutely horrible. Especially if you have like a sapphire, you're not going to want a gold mouse patch on, on your hand. It's just not going to look good. For seeing them in game, most people don't care. Most people don't realize like Bum Boy said. And as it goes for the main buy menu, if you want to go ahead and spend $100 for yourself when no one else cares, only you can see it. And for the most part, depends on what agent you're rocking. Besides like maybe one or two of them, you can't really see them yourself. Then by all means, go for it. But that is my argument. I think it's pretty valid. And I think it makes a lot of sense, at least to me anyway. And that's why I don't really care about them. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Our next question up here is from Minnie. He says, is it too late to invest in Stockholm 2021? This is a very good question. And also one I've received quite a bit as of recently. Long answers, no. Short answers, yes. So the long term of things, absolutely not. You have a lot of potential here only being four and sometimes not even over a dollar for a lot of these capsules and stickers. But as it goes for the short term of things, going in for the next couple of months is probably not going to work out for you. You're going to want to stretch things out as long as you can. Go towards that two year mark, right? Spread your investments out a little differently. Go into contenders, go into challengers, go into other things and make sure you buy the dips when they do dip, right? The past couple of days, these things have gone up. They've also dropped back down earlier today, not by a lot, by a few cents. And that's where you want to go in specifically. As it goes for building a whole inventory off of these, this is where I would say you've missed your boat, but there's still obviously a lot of opportunity with it. It's a lot cheaper than going to something a lot more expensive, like an older sticker from an older major, like 2014 to like 2017. But for me, to give you guys an example, I spent around $700 building an entire inventory off of Copenhagen Flames when they were around 2 to $3 in the Steam market. That was with changing out these stickers, right? On different weapons, selling these weapons, not really making anything on them. So you have to be damn well sure that's the craft you want. But now you're looking at it two times of what I paid for it, right? To build an entire inventory, because you're probably going to do the exact same thing. You're going to sell some things you don't want, or you just kind of find out later down the line, they don't look that great. You want to change up. And then the stickers are two times the price, right? So you're going to be paying a lot more. And that's not something everyone wants to do. My advice in that case would probably just to go with something like Antwerp. But as it goes to an investment, absolutely not. Just make sure you diversify your investments, go into different stickers, go into different capsules. And there's even room here to go in something like the Champions capsule, right? There's room for everything, even patches if you'd want to. But I wouldn't really classify that as a Stockholm investment, especially on the sticker side of things, obviously. That pretty much wraps up everything for Mando Monday. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I sure did. Once again, if you guys have any answers towards our very first question about the Challengers capsule from Stockholm 2021 quantity, that being how many are left on the market or across people's inventories and storage units, do you guys think there's under 500,000? Do you guys think there's under 100,000? I'm for one to think there's definitely over 100,000, maybe not at the point of over 500,000. It's hard to say, hard to tell, but that's just my guesstimate at this point. Let me know what you guys think. Stay positive, stay sexy. I'm out, guys. Peace.